Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is basic DHCP setup on Windows Server 2012. So we are going to do our first configurations for DHCP Server on Windows Server 2012. Now it's very important to understand if you are watching this video class, this is not an introductory level video class. If you don't understand DHCP or TCP IP or Windows Server 2012 or any of that, you're going to be completely lost. You can follow along, but just realize that this is another class in the Windows Server 2012 track, and at this point you need a, a fairly decent understanding of how TCP IP networking works. And if you don't, you're, you're probably going to get lost and confused. So I did a class on introduction to DHCP where we talked about some of the basic concepts that you need to know for DHCP. And in this class today, we are going to set up a basic DHCP server on Windows Server 2012. Now it's very important to understand once you get into the enterprise world, once you, so you get into the Windows enterprise world, you can start doing lots and lots of fancy, complicated, convoluted things um, that most of us frankly will never do. <laughs> so this is a basic DHCP setup class. Basically what we're going to do today is we are going to set up the scope for the DHCP server. We are going to set up the options. So basically we're going to, set to, uh, to tell the DHCP clients what the DNS servers are, what the default gateways are. Basically so our Windows uh, Server 2012 server can give out basic DHCP uh, IP addresses. Now we're not going to go into to fault tolerance and super scopes and multi-casting scopes and all that today, just because that will take a long time. We're just basically, we're just getting up to basic implementation of DHCP on your Windows Server 2012 box. Now at this point, you should have already installed DHCP on your Windows uh, 2012 server. So we did that in a different class. Now when we're thinking about setting up DHCP, this is where we start to get to the point where we start to get into things being as much an art Art as they are a science or a technology. So, so what I'm going to show you today is how to configure the DHCP server, but you, you are going to have to figure out what your own IP addressing scheme is. So this is something for you to think about is what kind of IP addresses do you want? How many subnets do you need? How many hosts on the network do you need? So I'm going to use a 10.1.10.x uh, network today, uh, but what you decide to use is, is, is completely up to you. So this is one of the things that you have to think about. You know, we've, I've had a class on TCP IP and subnet masking, this is where you have to start to think, how many hosts do you need on the network? So how big does the subnet have to be? Therefore, what type of IP addresses should you be giving out? Now, if you are just in a lab environment or if you are in just a normal uh, computer environment, the address scheme that I'm using today should work fine for you. But again, this is just something uh, that, that you're gonna have to think about. So before we dive into the computer, I wanna go over to my little digital whiteboard um, just to make sure uh, that we're on the same page with a few things uh, so that you guys uh, don't get lost. So, first I, I just want to explain a little bit about, about the network, again, just to make sure that we are on the same page. So, we are thinking about all of our little client computers that are going to be receiving dynamic IP addresses from our DHCP server. Um, whenever they request them. So if they do an IP config forward slash renew, the DHCP server will give them uh, the, the information. Now with us today, as I've talked about before, DHCP and DNS and Active Directory can be on entirely different servers, on entirely different boxes. But in a simple world, in the world that most of you guys are going to be dealing with, DHCP and DNS and Active Directory will be on the same server. This is one thing just to keep in mind, these things may be in separate places, um, but many times they'll be on the same box. The other device on the network that we need to keep in mind for today 
is the modem or ISP router that gets you out onto the internet. The reason that you should keep this in mind is that router or modem has DNS configurations installed or set up onto it. The DNS configurations for this modem or router connect to internet-based DNS, and this is what will allow you to find websites such as CNN.com or EliTheComputerGuy.com. Now, normally, whenever we're talking um, about the, this, this modem or this router, this will be our default gateway. And normally, we, this is going to have the .1 IP address for the network. So today, it will be considered 10.1.10.1. So this would be the default gateway and it would also be a DNS server. Now our server, the server that has a DHCP and DNS and Active Directory. Now you can, you can make this any IP address within the, uh, the address scheme, but I generally make it the dot two of the, this network. So I would make this 10.1.10.2. So the, the modem, the default gateway, would be 10.1.10.1, and the DHCP server would be 10.1.10.2. Now the important thing to also realize is that we are talking about DNS. So one of your DNS servers will be 10.1.10.1 and your, your local server will be 10.1.10.2. Why this is important is remember with DNS, DNS is what resolves host names and domain names to IP addresses. So when I set up the DHCP uh, configurations, what I will do is I will make 10.1.10.2 the primary DNS server and 10.1.10.1 the secondary DNS server. So when a computer tries to find a host name, it will first go to our primary server and then if it doesn't find it there, it will go up to that ISP modem or the router if it's trying to go off to CNN.com. This is one of the things though that you have to think about um, before you actually start setting up your, your DHCP scopes is you have to get an idea of what IP addresses you want to give out, what, the, uh, what different devices on the network what IP addresses they should have, so on and so forth. So if you have a lot of networking equipment that needs their own static IP address, you need to keep that in mind before you set up uh, your, your, your DHCP, DHCP scopes. So this is the first thing that we have to think about. So you have your, you have your router, your, your, your ISP modem, that is your default gateway. That's what gets the, the local computers off of the local area network and out into the cloud, out into the internet. And then you have your server that today and generally will have DHCP and Active Directory and DNS, and that is there to provide those services. Again, I always put dot one as your default gateway, and then this primary server I generally put as dot two. You can choose whatever you want. That, that, that's, what, that's what I personally choose. But you should start to come down with a pattern for, for how you address different devices that need static IP addresses. So for me, I always made uh, the dot one address was the default gateway. And then between dot two and dot 10, I always made those the servers on the network. Dot 11 to dot 20 was the networking equipment. Dot 21 to dot 30 were generally the printers, the network printers. So in a small environment, in a business with less than 100 users, those were the static addresses that I would use. Again, this is just something uh, that, that you have to think about. So now that we have that in our head, let's actually go over to the computer so I can show you how to do these configurations. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the server itself already has a static IP address. So if there's one thing on the network that needs a static IP address, it is the server itself. So what we're going to do is in Windows 2012 world, it's all convoluted. So we go up to the right hand corner and we hover and we hover hover, there we go, until the search thing shows up. I click on search and then what I'm going to type in is I want to type in network. Then I will go to settings 
and then I go to what it shows here, it says view network connections. So this will show us our network connections. Now, as we can see, I have the ethernet connection on here. And so what I can do is I can right click this. I can go to properties. I can go down to TCP IP version four. So today we're only worrying about version four. I know everybody says TCP IP six is right on the horizon. It's going to be here tomorrow. You should be deploying network systems for TCP IP six tomorrow because it's going to be here. And I can tell you they've been saying that for, for 15 years. <laughs> so so uh, TCP IP version six will be here at some point, but we are not messing with it today. We are only dealing with TCP IP version four. So we're going to go to properties and we can see that I've already set up the static information for this particular server. So the IP address is 10.1.10.2. I gave it a 255.0.0.0 subnet. Default gateway 10.1.10.1. Then the DNS server. So remember, I actually have to set these DNS servers up on this server. So 10.1.10.2 we haven't done the class yet, but I will configure DNS on this server when we do that class. So I want the preferred DNS to be this server itself, and then the alternate DNS server will be that router. So if this server is trying to find a local com computer, let's say PC2, it will look to itself to find the IP information for that computer. If this, this server is trying to get out to, let's say, CNN.com, it will look to the, uh, to the ISP modem or to the router for that information. So you just put in the static information here. Whatever it is, like I say, the 10.1.10 .10 is, is just an easy one to use and you get a whole bunch of IP addresses if you want to use them. So then you hit OK, and then you hit Close and then you hit close. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the lower left-hand corner and click on Server Manager. So Server Manager uh, is where we're going to be able to do a lot of things uh, on our server. Now, what we're gonna do is we can see over in the left-hand corner, it says DHCP. But if we click on this, it's not going to really give us much that we can do anything with right now. But it will say configuration required for DHCP server at server. So this, this server's name is in fact server. So what we need to do is this is telling us we need to configure the DHCP information for the server. So what we do is we go up to tools, click on tools, and this gives us all the, the, the tools in order to configure our server with the services that are currently installed on it. So what we're looking for is DHCP. Since we've already installed DHCP, we now have this management console that will allow us to manage DHCP. Now we click on that and we get one of the beautiful MMC's Microsoft management consoles. So, so these are things that if you're not used to, well, you'll get used to pretty quick. So these are the consoles that we use to administer all these, these type, different types of services. We'll see it's DHCP, and then we'll see that we have one server here, so server.etcg.com. So again, the computer's name, this server's name is server, and I set this up to be the domain of etcg.com. You can now see you also have the TCP IP version of Four information and version 6 information. Again, we're not going to mess with version 6 because, I, I don't know, we'll mess with it uh, <laughs> once it comes. Now you'll see that there are a lot of, there, there are a couple of different uh, um, options here. So we have server options, we have policies, we have filters, so on and so forth. Again, these go into uh, complicated things that we are not going to deal with today. We are going to just deal with setting up a basic uh, DHCP server. So in order to do that, what we can do is we go up to where it says IP version 4 and then we right right click on it and then from here we can see that there's an option for a new scope. So as we talked about in the introduction to DHCP class, the scope is, is, is the, the pool of IP addresses that this server will be able to automatically assign. So all we're gonna be doing is doing the new scope. Again, as I've said, you see there's a whole bunch of stuff here and we are just going to ignore all of that. <laughs> we're just gonna go to new scope. And this will send us to through a wizard. So all we do is we click next and then it's going to say, what is the name of the scope? So 
This is just the basic scope, the generic scope. So I will call it basic. You can call it whatever you like. And then you click next. Now it's asking you, what is the scope? So we have to remember what our IP address is. So 10.1.10.1, 10.1.10.2. So if I'm doing a scope, let's say I do 10.1.10.100. And then the end of the scope is 10.1.10.200. So I'm basically allowing this to give out um, 100, 100 different IP addresses between 10.1.10.100 and 10.1.10.200. So it may give out 10.1.10.100 or 105 or 125, but it will not give out a .10. And it will not give out a dot two ten. It will only give out addresses between one hundred and two hundred. Then it's going to ask you for the subnet mask length. Um, again, this goes back to what you decide. I would say right now, just leave it as it is and click next. Now, what it's going to be asking you is um, what. Is there a range in here of IP addresses you want to exclude from the pool? For like whatever reason, are there addresses that you, the IP addresses that you want to exclude? That's up to you again. Um, I generally would make sure that all the, my, the IP addresses that need to be excluded would simply not be within the scope to begin with. But, you know, again, this is art. You decide what you do. I'm just going to not put anything here. I click next. Now, again, as I talked about in the introduction to DHCP class, when IP addresses are given out, they're given out, least out, for a certain amount of time. Again, art and science. So it defaults to eight days. Depending on what environment you are in, you may want this to be longer or shorter. If you are in an environment such as a call center environment, you may put this Eight days is frankly fine, even if in a call center. But let's say it's a call center environment where you have a thousand computers that are always basically just sitting there. They never leave the premises. You might be able to put this up to 30 days. On the other hand, if you have an internet cafe or in an enterprise environment, let's say you have an office where a lot of salespeople are continuously coming in and out. So a lot of businesses have salespeople. And they may have hundreds or thousands of salespeople that may stream in and out of a headquarters office. So they're continuously continuously pulling IP addresses um, so that they can get on the network. In an environment like that, you may want to put this down to hours. You may want to put this down to like six hours to make sure all of the, the, those people that are coming in and out, they don't eat up all of your IP addresses. But again, at the end of the day, that's all an art, what you decide to do. I will leave it at eight days and click next. Now it's going to say, do you want to configure the options? So the options are where you tell it where the DNS servers are, that type of stuff. So I would say, yes, configure the options now. Click next. So now it's asking you for what is the default gateway. Hopefully you guys know what the default gateway is. You know, that's the router, that's the ISP modem. So as I said, 10.1.10.1 is the default gateway. So in the Windows world, you can actually give it more default gateways, but in a small environment, I only have one. So this is how you would get off the network. And then we click next. So it's asking the parent domain. So that's etcg.com. And then it's asking to add a DNS servers. And these are the DNS servers that will be given out with the DHCP addresses. So I already have the DNS servers in here. So 10.1.10.2 is the primary. 10.1.10.1 um, is, is the secondary. Just to show you if I wanted to add one, so I can remove a server or I can type in the address and add it. Now, since the DNS server hasn't actually been set up on this particular server yet, this is actually going to fail out. Um, but if the DNS server was set up on the server, then it would recognize that and it would be fine. So you can move these up or down. I will move 10.1.10.2. So that is this server up as the primary because this will be a DNS server in the future and I want it to be the primary. Then we go next. Then we've got win servers. Do you have wins? Who uses WINS? Um, if, in fact, you have WINS set up um, for some reason, for some legacy, really old legacy client, um, you can set up that information here. Um, again, I haven't seen WINS in quite a long time, but if you do, you can set that up here. 
And now finally you get to the end and it says, do you want to activate this scope now? So I would generally say yes. So you just say yes and finish. Now, as you can see, we have the scope. So we have the scope basic and then we have some additional things. So it says the address pool, it says address leases, it says the reservations, scope options, policies that we'll get into later. Um, all of this information is here. So basically we have set up a basic scope now. So if we go down and we click on address leases and I go over to one of my other computers and do renew, oops, there we go, it renewed and I do refresh and so you can see I have a client computer on the network that just pulled an IP address from this DHCP server 10.1.10.100 and this is the name of it lease expiration type unique ID so on and so forth so if you had a hundred or a thousand or just more computers on the network pulling DHCP addresses you would start to see all of that information here now up on the DHCP server um, on the server itself, we can uh, right click and under tasks, again, sometimes in the Windows world or any server world, you have to restart services. Now, what I found with DHCP uh, server on Windows Server 2012 is it's pretty responsive. Basically, you, you set it up and you don't have to restart the service. But for some reason, if you had to start, stop, or restart the DHCP server service, you would right click on the server you will go to all tasks and then you you know stop pause restart so you can do that here so some of you guys some of the, the quote unquote pros always like to restart services whenever they change configurations um, yeah you know you can do that that's up to you um, and that's basically all there is to setting up the DHCP server on a Windows uh, 2012 server. So, so I basically, I had, I had this server connected into a switch. I had a different computer and you saw all I had to do was renew the IP address and all of a sudden, you know, the IP address was pulled from the scope on the server. Now, the very important thing, I have talked about this like 500 times by this point, but I will say it for the 501st time, is remember, if you are using a, a small office, home office router, that you turn off DHCP on this router. Remember, if you have multiple DHCP servers on your local area network that are not communicating with each other, you will create a horrendous mess, especially in the Microsoft world. So before you set up the DHCP server on your, on your server, Windows 2012 server, make sure you turn it off in, in your router. So whether it's the ISP modem, whether it's your router, whatever you have, make sure that DHCP server is turned off. Essentially all you normally do is you go in through the web interface, you find the DHCP component, you click off, you click save settings, and then it's off. But you have to make sure that the DHCP server is off on this thing um, or, or it'll cause all kinds of problems. Again, this was a simple basic class for DHCP on Windows Server 2012 and this is what most of you guys will have to know and it will allow us to move forward to set up DNS, to set up Active Directory and start building things out. Again, once you get into the enterprise world, there are very complicated things that you can do but as I've said, that's why you go out and buy a book like this, Windows Server 2012 Unleashed by Sam's, and this will give you all the information on all the fancy things that you can do with the Windows uh, 2012 Server DHCP service. Uh, but for now, this gives us the scope. So we, we create the scope of IP addresses so the server can give out those IP addresses. We tell that scope what the default gateway is, what the DNS servers should be, so all of that information is given out uh, to the clients. Now I will tell you, 
having actually done this for a while, if you set up your DHCP server and then all the client computers on the network are having wacky communication problems, it's probably because you fat fingered something and you messed up the IP information when you were plugging it in. Either you put in the wrong default gateway or you put in the wrong DNS settings. If you go back and change those settings, um, everything uh, should, should work out pretty good for you. And the final thing, just to remember, is again, since your server is giving out DHCP addresses, you have to make sure that it has a static IP address for itself. So you set up the static IP address in the DHCP server, then you set up the scopes, so on and so forth. When it goes in to actually coming up with your, your TCP IP um, um, structure, that's, that, that's all up to you. I mean, you can use 10.1.10.x with a 255.0.0.0 uh, subnet mask. You could use a 192.168.1.x with a 255.255.255.0 subnet. Um, those are the types of things that you'll just, you kind of have to figure out on your own. You have to decide, you know, that, that, that's where it gets into a bit of the art. Um, but I will tell you, if you're creating your network, 192.168.1.x with a class C subnet 255.255.255.0 that will give you 254 uh, IP addresses that you can deal with. Um, it should be good. If you use the, the 10, 10 dot x dot x dot x with a 255, a class A subnet, then that gives you, I don't know, a lot millions, I think, of different IP addresses you can use. Again, that goes into you understanding TCP IP and IP address schemes, and that's way beyond the scope of this class. <laughs> so, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This was basic, basic DHCP setup on Windows Server 2012. Again, if you have no clue what the hell I just talked about, I have an introduction to T uh, DHCP class that I did before. Um, we have the whole series on Windows Server 2012. Uh, before this, you know, we have classes on TCP IP. Again, this is definitely, 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 definitely not a beginner course. Um, so, so if you don't understand what I talked about, go learn TCP IP and a bit about Windows Server, and then maybe you'll understand what's going on. So, as always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.